Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in the dojo today. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Now, if you're like me, I got tired of driving my car and uh, I wanted to try something new and different, so I checked out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used to drive a 2013 Prius, then I used the Fair Program and I got a really clean and spacious Hyundai Elantra with a great stereo system for $195 per week plus taxes. That includes everything, your rideshare insurance, and unlimited miles. And since Fair partners with Uber, you can earn a very strong bonus for a relatively low number of trips and pay for the car. This program is available in California for now, but there are programs all across the country. So check the Fair website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out. Download the Fair app and get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's our code, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right, all right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Before I start with this podcast episode, I wanted to say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope you're uh, with someone you love, family you love, uh, people you tolerate, whatever. Uh, I hope you're going to eat some good food today and uh, maybe drink some wine and uh, eat some pumpkin pie or some apple pie, some turkey, I really like the uh, the canned cranberry jelly, you know, the, 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 the solid thing. You open the can and it just kind of plunks out. I like that. I'm going to have some of that today. I'm uh, hanging out with my brother and his family and my mother. So I'm going to have a good day, and I hope you're having a fantastic day as well as you celebrate uh, and be grateful for your success, for your prosperity, for people in your life. Hell just for being alive, for being one of about a billion sperm that popped through and actually made it to becoming a human being. For that alone, let's be thankful and grateful. Y'all have a great day. Now let's start the show. Hey there out there, drivers, you men and women on the road. It's Jay Crater. Great to be with you today. I am recording this on Tuesday the 19th, and uh, it's a great morning. It's about 10, 15 in the morning. I'm sitting here at my desk just to paint you a picture. I've got a big picture of a bathtub on my wall uh, at a place I used to live. I've got uh, two calendars. Both of them have um, island pictures. I have got a picture of me with my daughter I'm looking at. I've got two quotes. Uh, One is from Captain Ahab uh, from Moby Dick. It says, uh, if man will strike, strike through the mask. How can the prisoner reach outside except by thrusting through the wall? It's probably my, it's definitely my top five of all time quotes. And then I got this other one. Uh, It says, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. And that's a quote by somebody named Mary Oliver. And I just kind of like that. On my desk, I've got about 15 books. They're all open and noted up and just books. I got a book called Work the System, Steal Like an Artist, The 4-Hour Work Week, 
the way of the superior man, the elements of style, science of breath, Carlos Castaneda's journey to Ixlan, Jed McKenna's spiritual enlightenment, the war of art, Ask the Dust, my books, I've got What's Next, I've got Radical Freedom, I've got The Coaching Habit, I've got Book Four by Aleister Crowley and The Ultimate Sales Letter. And of course, I've got my journal, which I write in every morning and every night. I'm sitting on my desk in my comfortable chair, drinking my Nespresso. So that's what's going on with me. How are you doing out there? So I wanted to share with you, you know, I've done uh, this for a while, been uh, driving for Uber and Lyft, and something happened which uh, broke a record for me this weekend, and that was my longest trip. So I've taken trips in the past that have gone from San Francisco up to the wine country. It's about 100 miles. Um, I've gone from San Francisco up to Sacramento a couple of times. That's also about 100 miles. And I went from San Francisco to Salinas, which might be about 100 and maybe 50 miles. Well, this weekend, it was on Saturday, it was about 10.30. I had gotten a ride from San Francisco over to uh, Berkeley. And then I got a ping uh, for a pickup in Berkeley. And there's a woman with a big suitcase. And, uh, you know, it, it tells you when you get the ping, it said over 45 minutes. And I thought, oh, great. Maybe they're going to San Jose. Maybe they're going to, uh, you know, somewhere in Marin, maybe the wine country. Where, where could it be? And I was down with it right off the bat. And when I got there, she said, you know, are you willing to do this ride? And I said, well, where are we going? And it said, North Fork. She said, it's near Yosemite. It's <laughs> like, wow. Okay. I, I didn't even think twice about it. I just, something inside me said, go for it. I didn't really think about the numbers. So when I work the weekends in San Francisco, I'm working to get 82 rides in. And I got to be pretty diligent about uh, how I approach my driving and not, not take too many long rides. Um, and I didn't really even think about that I wasn't going to get my bonus by taking this ride because, um, I don't know, something just said to me, go for it. So typically my goals for the weekend are to make $800. And uh, I'll do $200 on Friday, $300 on Saturday, $200 on Sunday, and then I head back up to, to Sacramento and I get a $100 bonus. So that's $800. But by taking this ride, I was not going to get um, 82 rides, right, in three days. Because three. this is a three-hour trip. Uh, so that's one ride in three hours. Normally, I would get like nine rides in three hours. But instead, I'm just getting one. Plus, on the ride back, what I deadhead the whole way, you know, back to San Francisco, you know, what would what would that look like? I didn't really have any idea. I'll share with you what my numbers were at the end of the, end of the weekend. So when it comes to these long trips, um, the question I ask myself is, you know, do I want to see the landscape? Do I want to get out of the city and just kind of get some air under my under my wings, right? And in this case, I just did. I just didn't feel like being in the city. I thought it's going to be interesting if nothing else, you know? It's going to be a unique experience, and it would definitely be the longest trip of my career, which is saying something after having done 26,000 uh, trips so far. So I took it. I took the ride. Uh, the woman's name was Deep D, and uh, we drove for three hours. We stopped once because she was hungry. She wanted to go to Taco Bell. And interestingly, she was going to a seven-day silent meditation. So what that is, is you check in, you hand over your phone, any books, anything. You basically are just going to have your clothes and your toiletries, and you're going to be sitting with your own mind for, you know, 10 days. Uh, you, eat, you eat one big meal a day. That's that. There are other people who are sitting at tables as well, but you're not really even making eye contact or talking. 
and uh, and then you just go back and you know you can walk around outside in nature and uh, that's it. So I've heard about this, of course, being on the spiritual path as I as I have. I've never done this particular type of meditation. I did do a 10-day dieta in Peru where I was isolated and um, the only time I saw people was um, at night, um, every other night when we would go and have an ayahuasca ritual together. Um, And we also had very regulated diet. So all we ate was oatmeal, quinoa, white rice, and brown rice. And once... Once in the whole 10 days, we got some jungle chicken, which is just scrawny chicken. But believe me, I ate every molecule of chicken off those bones. (laughs) It tasted pretty good. But but the idea of sitting silently for 10 days actually appeals to me quite a bit, you know, just to totally disconnect. I've heard Jack Dorsey of um, Twitter talk about doing it. Sam Harris has done it quite a few times. So... Um, I was interested to learn more about it. So she explained it to me and told me some of the details. And, uh, you know, we got there and there's this gate that opened up, Vipassana, it said on the on the gate. And I said, well, how much do they charge for this 10-day experience? And she said, oh, there's no charge for it. Uh, but everybody makes a donation at the end. And I said, oh, I bet everyone donates something like $500. She goes, yeah, I think that's like what most people donate. But if you couldn't donate anything, you wouldn't have to if you wanted to go and really clear out your head. And I asked her why she did it. Why would you go and spend uh, 10 days? And she said it was just kind of a purification process that it kind of allowed her to, you know, just kind of get into some issues that that were going on in her life and and just sort of let them self-heal, you know, in that silence silence. It's a really about embracing the silence. And um, she said, certainly some people do leave. You know, they don't make it through the 10 days, but um, she'd always made it through the 10 days. So it sounds like something I'd like to do. But that's, so this is what I'm sharing with you is the kind of thing that you can learn when you take a long trip, right? You're going to spend a long time in the car with another human being and you could you could have uh, very interesting conversations. And I also, as I said, I wanted to see the landscape. It was kind of a chance for me to reconnect with uh, the Central Valley, where I used to work a lot, um, selling advertising on shopping carts. So I've been to Turlock and Modesto and, and uh, Madeira. We drove through Madeira, Fresno, Bakersfield, you know, um, all the Clovis, you know, all, all, all those little places. And, uh, you know, seeing the taco trucks, seeing the Agua f- uh, Fresca stands, seeing the roadside diners, seeing this just, uh, you know, it's all, it's all, all dry and, 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 and the, the grass is all burned. So it's all that kind of golden brown look to, to the landscape. It was uh, really, really quite pleasant. So I got there, dropped her off, and... Um, realized I wasn't going to get a tip because the first thing she was going to do when she walked in there was hand in her phone. So I'm now waiting to see if at the end of 10 days when she comes out, if uh, the Lyft app will remind her to rate the ride and give me a tip. (laughs) And we'll see. Typically, when you do these long rides, you get a pretty good tip, especially when the passenger realizes that you you probably aren't going to get many rides um, on the way back. And that's another big question you have to ask yourself when you're going to take a long ride. What's the likelihood of you getting any rides going back? And in my case, I totally miscalculated that because there's just like nothing uh, where I dropped her off. It was just, you know, farms very spread out and I was kind of in the mountains and it was real rocky and just not a lot of people and certainly not a lot of business for, for Uber and Lyft. So I dropped her off. And then I drove for about two hours, um, and I decided on the way back that I would head towards um, Morgan Hill, and I figured that would be the closest I could get where I could legitimately get you know get rides heading back towards San Francisco, and I still had three destination filters left. I had used one earlier um, in the day, so 
I drove, I stopped at Starbucks, I got a nice cold brew. They also have this nice little package of um, salami and cheese, which I really like. It's very low carb and it's simple and it's uh, nice to eat a piece of cheese with a piece of salami. It's easy to eat in the car. Really enjoyed that, driving, listening to my Led Zeppelin music with the, the sunroof open, pretty great. And finally, I got to Morgan Hill and at that point, I put on the uh, the apps again, and I uh, got a ride. I got a ride from a guy. It was a 40-minute trip from Morgan Hill all the way to Palo Alto. And he was great. He handed me a $10 cash tip. And then I got three more rides that took me right back to uh, to the airport, which is about 10 minutes from where I'm staying. So it worked out, you know. It worked out just fine. I... Would have liked to have gotten more rides coming back, but because uh, I did have two hours of like deadhead time. But overall, it, it actually worked out. So for the weekend, instead of 200 on Friday, I worked extra hard and I got 300. And then on Saturday, um, with, that ex- with that long ride that I got, I was able to make 420. So instead of making 300, I made $420. I did not get uh, get the bonus because of that uh, that long ride and the two hours of deadheading. So basically, in like five to six hours, I got one ride. And then on Sunday, I put the pedal to the metal, and instead of two hundred, I got two fifty. Uh, I usually drive on Sundays from five in the morning until noon, and I was able to uh, to make two fifty in that time. So my total for the weekend was nine hundred and seventy dollars. Whereas normally my goal would be um, $800. So even though I didn't get the bonus, I still made an extra $170. And a big part of that was because I took this long ride. The long ride paid me $172. So that was also my the, the ride that I've made the most money on in a single ride. My record before that was $155. And that was actually on a short ride, a, a one hour ride that had a a, a surge multiplier of 5.5, and that paid me 155 for an hour. Here I made uh, $172 in three hours, right? So what, uh, what are the lessons uh, we can learn here? Be flexible. You know, I, I went for it, and, uh, you know, I didn't have to be back. I had to be back, uh, back home for a dinner uh, commitment at 7 o'clock, so I didn't I, I had the time to do it. Um, yeah, and be open to new experiences. You know, I had this great chat about meditation, and uh, it's definitely something I'm going to do. And now I know where it is and, and how, to, how to get hooked up. Um, I got to see the landscape, which I wanted to see. I got to put the top down and open the sunroof and listen to some Led Zeppelin. That was fantastic. And in the end, I made $170 more over the weekend than I thought I would, uh, primarily because I took this this trip. So that's what I learned. Stay open. Take it easy. Um, when uh, the woman told me that she was having trouble getting this ride, I said, well, how many drivers were there ahead of me that said no? She said, two. You were the third. She said, in fact, my husband was getting ready to get in the car and drive me. So he would have had to have driven three hours there and three hours back. Um, so he was probably really happy when I just said, sure, <laughs> I'll do it. It was kind of funny. She and I laughed about that, how uh, enthusiastic I was about the opportunity to, uh, to do this. And I think the thing that mostly motivated me was I wanted to break my own record for the longest ride. And I did that 200 miles in three hours and $172 all all break my records. So there you have it. I hope uh, you enjoyed the story about Jay's longest ride, which occurred this last Saturday. And uh, I guess that's it. Be flexible and enjoy this experience. You know, I'm planning to stop driving soon or at least go very, very part time. And I know there's there are lots of uh, experiences and memories I have, which I uh, I'm going to miss. Uh, when I when I'm doing this less and less and less, so enjoy it while you can, because uh, it won't go on forever. All right, thanks everybody. I really appreciate you. I respect you. Uh, drivers are awesome out there on the road, making it happen, doing what you got to do, 
working on your plan B, creating a life that's magical and beautiful and inspiring to others and to yourself. So you guys are great. You rock. And I will see you next week. And next week, we're going to bring you Mr. Sergio, who's going to school us on how to make get the most out of Surge. So Mr. Sergio with the Rideshare Guy is going to be my guest uh, next week. So be sure and check that out. Bye for now. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily, in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.